Now, I said I don't use a grid, but a lot of people do. So one thing that we're going to look at over here is a thing called the sketch palette. Now, if you're following along, I'd advise you just at this stage to make sure that the top three boxes are unticked and definitely the bottom box is unticked. So on here, you're going to see two items. One is a sketch grid and one is a snap. So if we put the sketch grid on and we do snap, what will happen now is when I do a line, as I go off on these grid lines, you will notice that it transfers to a blue box. Now the blue box indicates that it's on a snapping point. And there's also a crosshair. So you can see my crosshair as I go across and then it goes round on there. So I can go from that point there, come up to another grid line and then double click on that one. So this would be quite handy if you wanted to do a, a horizontal line from there to that point and we know that's 35 millimeters because the grid is currently set at i don't know whatever that is five mil let's say okay now that little blue box is actually quite important because not only does it show when you're snapping let's just draw another line if we go from there to there you get a blue box when you go on the end of a line or on a grid but also if we didn't have the snapping on that would also indicate when you're actually on the line so you know that you're definitely on the line there because you've got a blue cross and then you can go across at any angle and then finish your line. So we know definitely that that line is connected to that line. Talking about joining two lines together, if you do a line and you go, I bring the snap back on right as well, from there to there, quite often you'll want to put a line in the middle of another line. So if we go onto this line, we can see here that we've got the little cross. Now, when you get near to the middle, you'll get a little triangle. Now that triangle is another constraint, which means you're at the middle of the line. So we can go from there and come across and that will create a line at the middle of another line. The other thing you can do with lines is you can actually force them to stay perpendicular to another line. The way you do that, as you start your line, but instead of clicking and then moving your mouse, keep the mouse held down. And what will happen is as your line comes up, you will notice a little square box at the bottom of the line. And wherever I drag my mouse, that line will always stay perpendicular to the line below it. OK. So that's forcing a line to stay perpendicular. So at the moment, what we've looked at is we've just looked at single lines. So what happens if I do a line and instead of clicking, double clicking or ticking the box, what happens? Well, we start with the first point and then we go to a second point. And if we carry on, we can actually create any kind of shape we want. And we'll just keep carrying on until we double click or escape or return or any of the other ones. One thing you'll notice on here, there are two circles. Now the circles indicate that this forms an open, uh, I'm sorry, brain's gone. But anyway, it's, it's an open sketch or an open, sorry, an open profile. To close that profile, what we can do is we can start a new line and we can click and you'll notice again, this is the importance of these blue boxes where you click over the line. And then we go up to the next one and we get that blue box again. Now, I didn't have to double click. That's finished the line because we now have a closed profile. We can also, if we want, just drag those little round dots 
and we can drag one over the other we get that blue square again and that will again close the profile on the line uh, one of the things you'll notice is the icon for it is a line with a like a, a hockey stick an arc on the end of it seems very strange but it's a it's a real clever shortcut so if we press l to start a line we start there if we go to the second one as opposed to clicking just hold the mouse down and then drag the mouse to another point and that will create a curve or an arc on the end of your line now again you can go downwards doesn't really matter but the icon shows it it's just coming up that way so that's why the icon is a line with a curve at the bottom so what you can do is you could start another line from here so you start it but instead of clicking it at the end keep your mouse pushed down arc it across close the sketch profile and you end up with a slot with only two lines so that's a little shortcut Did I say these videos are only going to be 10 minutes? <laughs> Sorry. This is, um, so the other thing to notice when you're doing uh, lines, um, you get auto uh, construction lines. So if we start at this point and we come up to here, if we carry on down, you'll notice that you get these little blue dotted lines. Now these are referencing points on the other line. So this is actually referencing the middle of that first line. So I could stop there and I know that is directly in line with the middle of that line. If I carry on down, I can actually make another one. He says with great confidence in line with the end there. So they're auto construction lines but they don't put them in. They're just reference to help you with your drawing. Oh, let me just come out of that. Now, sometimes when you draw a line or a shape, what you're gonna find is that you're drawing away. Let me just do something. And you make a shape and you think, ah, brilliant. What I wanna do then is I wanna drag that to a different, position so let's say i want to push this one out to make it more pointy into the corner and weird things like this start happening and it's like well that's really not what I, I i really don't understand this and the reason being is that you've got a constraint there which is the one that i said get put in automatically so if you find that you want to drag a sketch around and it's just not doing what it it should be doing start off initially by deleting that constraint and then now you can drag this thing around wherever you want to drag it to theoretically whatever shape you want to make it. Now, one constraint that you don't want to delete is this one here. Now, this one here is a coincidence. So what that actually means is if I delete that one, we get that little white dot back again. And what that means is it's actually broken the continuity. So we need to put that one back in. It will close the shape again. So that's the one constraint that ideally you don't want to delete. So I'm going to quickly go over and I said quickly and I apologize. Um, we go over to the sketch palette. Now on the sketch palette here, you'll see there's a thing called line types. That's just um... now what we've drawn so far let's say for this sketch here is we've just drawn a load of lines now the reason we draw lines is because we want to extrude that now we're not going to go into extrude now because we mm, hopefully may have time later but when you extrude an item if i wanted to extrude this whole box here I would have to select that item, then that item, then that item, then that item. So I would have to do four clicks, select four profiles, and then extrude that up. So that's a long-winded way of doing it. So what we can actually do is we can make lines 
different. So let's just uh, get rid of that. So this line here is a line, but in the sketch palette on the options, I have a facility to make it what we call a construction line. So if I make that a construction line, it will turn to a dotted line. So I can make this one also as a construction line. I can finish that sketch. Now what's going to happen now when I extrude that, instead of extruding four individual profiles, I can just click on and that will extrude that out. Let's just undo that. There is one other thing on the uh, lines. So that's construction line. We also have a thing called a center line. So what we could do is if we select that one, it currently highlights as a construction line, but we could actually change that to a center line. And let's see what happens now when we try and extrude that. So if we extrude that, we now have to do two profiles because the center line still acts as a line when we're using extrude. But what you use it for, let's go back to edit that sketch. What you use that for would be either a revolve or a mirror. And what I mean by that, again, we're not going to go into revolve or mirror. That's for another lesson. But just to show you, if we hit revolve, two things are going to happen. One, because that's a center line, it has automatically selected that as the access at axis. So then if I click that profile and then OK, then you have a funky whatever it is spinning top thing. So on the uh, just bear with me one second. No, sorry about. Okay. So this is a sketch that I drew. So if we edit this sketch. We'll have a look at just quickly what the other sketch palette items do. Now we've looked at the sketch grid and the snap, so we know what they are. So the next one is a slice tool. This is one I didn't know about. So this, this sketch I drew fundamentally, i just finish that sketch, that produced that body. It's just like a little bit of a frame. Now, so far we've created sketches on a plane, but you can also create a sketch on a face. So if we create sketch and we click that face there, just the face of the body, let's say I wanted to draw a line between there and there, because I just want to extrude the top part of this out. I can do the L command and I can click there and what I would need to do is then I'd need to kind of move this around to, oh, and then I'm all confused. So let's not do that. What we can actually do is if we use the slice tool, what you'll find now is that has sliced that model directly on where the uh, sketch has been placed. So if I now do a line, I can click there, click there, finish the sketch, and that will remove the slice so that then I can extrude from there out to there. That's okay. So let's go back to that slice sketch. So that's the slice command. The next one you have is a profile. Now what that will do is that will switch on and off the profiles. I'm not going to go today into why you would want to do that, but when we go further down the course, you'll understand why. You can hide the points. So these are the points here. So if you click that one, that will hide the points. If you want to hide the dimensions, you click that one. 
And if you want to hide the constraints, which are these here, you can do that. Now, the other thing you can hide is what we call projected geometries. Again, we're not going to go into that. But fundamentally, uh, I had a cylinder body. I projected that onto the sketch. If I didn't want to see that, I could just unclick the projected geometries. The final thing you can do is to hide the construction geometry, which is that one. And that, we have the 3D sketch, but at this stage don't really want to go into that. But hopefully that's a lot longer than I was expecting, but I've kind of covered the sketch palette and the line, and hopefully there's some bits that you've learned from there.